Today we're discussing Spark of the Resistance by Justina Ireland. And after we light that fire, stick around because the Luminous author will join me to answer some of your questions about the book. The Star Wars Show Book Club is a series where we gather friends and fans to read Star Wars books, examining how they relate to all of the Star Wars films, live action shows, animated series, comics, and games. Through these stories, we enrich our understanding of the galaxy far, far away. Hello, Kristen Faber here, ready to burn the First Order down with a few new friends. Our story begins when the Resistance is rebuilding itself after the debilitating battles of Dakar and Crate in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Rey, Poe, Rose, and BB-8 are making supply runs with the Millennium Falcon as the rogues desperately try to find the allies they'll need for the battles ahead in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. During the mission, they answer a distress call on the jungle planet of Minfar and end up fighting the First Order and thwarting the infamous regime in an attempt to find the mysterious Echo Horn a legendary Imperial invention that was able to enslave those who heard its call. And of course, the Millennium Falcon is in need of repairs again, if they hope to rejoin their friends in the future to fight the Final Order. Set a course from Minfar, and let's meet our book club crew. First up, we have Molly Damon, a Star Wars trivia expert who's one half of the team behind the daily fan videos at Star Wars Explained. Molly, I always want to call you Molly Dameron, every single time. <laughs> I'll take it. Next, we have Susie McGrath, who gave Tam Revora on Star Wars Resistance her voice and her heart. Hello, hi. And we're also joined by a man that I like to think of as one of BB-8's dads, uh, puppeteer <laughs> Brian Herring. Hello, <laughs> hello, good evening. So to start us off, I would like us to settle a debate. It came up at the beginning of the story, so who's really the best pilot in the Resistance? Is it Ray or is it Poe? Hmm, I think Poe thinks he is, for sure. <laughs> I'd like to see them put that to the test at one point. Ooh, I mean, I would gamble and say almost Ray would definitely give him a run for his money, at least, which we see very early on in the book. In fighters or freighters, though, that's the thing. I think Poe might, might have the edge in, in small ships and Ray in big, fast ones. They should put them up against the ace pilots from Resistance. Yes! Then we'll yes. see. Absolutely. And Poe has very good hair. That's the real question. Who has the best hair? Is it Ray or Poe? Ooh. Well, there's a lot of mention of Poe's hair in this book. Yeah, that does. His, his hair does come up an awful lot in this book, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm noticing it in every book that Poe is in. It's like the best running joke that they always talk about yeah. like his flowing luscious locks now. And I'm like, yeah, no, of course you do. The Oscar Isaac does have very good hair. Yes. All right, but enough with the shenanigans. Uh, let's dive in. So. This story is an adventure between Star Wars The Last Jedi and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. So I think this story for me really highlighted how important every single member of the team is at that juncture. Did you all have kind of the, the same feeling with this story uh, in terms of it really kind of highlighting uh, the, the strength of individual characters and how combined they can really start to solve some of these bigger problems? Yeah, I definitely loved seeing this particular trio, Ray, Poe, and Rose, get to go on their own little adventure, and BB-8, of course. It was really nice to see the three of them get to connect a little bit more. Yeah, it, it, it was not. It was nice to see Rose as part of that team and play her, her role within that. And each each character I liked about the, the, the story was that each character did have their own moment to kind of play the part and shine and Rose, you know, got to do a mechanics thing and the thing with the, the I don't tell too much about it, but the, the, the thing thing in the lab that okay, she does. Okay, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Oh, okay, alert, right, the thing, with the, with the thing with the walker <laughs> in the lab and she got to kick some ass and that was just good fun. I think they called it a cannon with legs. Next moment of the book. It was, yeah, you know, <laughs> yes. yeah in, my, in my head it looked, like a, it looked like a scout walker with a chair and just really big fun. I enjoyed Rose because she was very kind of a stable type of character and very pleasant. And I think when we get to that point where she's saving, essentially saving the day, it was fun. I was like, this is the best bit of the book, you know, because you <laughs> don't expect it. And you kind of hope like, is she going to be okay? Because, you know, it's going down here. And then, yeah, boom. Yeah. Well, and it, it was one of those like, oh, I don't know how they're going to get out of this one kind of moments. And then it's just like, oh, okay. Rose has this, it's fine. How do you think that the Zixen feel the force? This is something Ray asks, and I don't think she ever really gets it answered, at least not in the context of the book. 
I think they're very attuned to nature, specifically when they're fighting the grovel and they know that the only thing uh, that can affect them is like the dust of this flower that blooms on the planet. There's something about being deep underground in the roots, in the, um, mm. in, in the core of something that, that kind of feels like you're inside of the heart, like the beat of, you know, the universe, whatever, or their planet. Um, I definitely mm. think that the nature is, is how they feel the force. They're definitely living with nature and, and so, with, you know, with the force, but we, we, by, you know, by utilizing the, the way that the flowers changed the light as they go through different places and, and how they're, you know, just using nature around them and, and nature is helping them as well. And I loved that part where the, the Zixen were talking about their friend and, you know, this friend has no name. And, you know, then Ray and Poe and, and Rose are all talking about it later and they're like, is that Luke Skywalker? Do you think that was Luke Skywalker? I think that was probably Luke. That just feeds into, for me, what was so great about the last scene of uh, The Last Jedi with the kids in the stable mm -hmm. playing Star Wars, but being in Star Wars, Luke standing against the First Order and, and that, that word getting out from those kids and around the galaxy and how that spread. That, you know, and that feeds into that Luke Skywalker was, was everywhere. We know that the First Order, for the most part, they don't believe the story of Luke on Crate and Commander Spitz in this book says he doesn't believe that that happened. He doesn't believe in the Force. He doesn't believe in Darth Vader. He also doesn't like to read. Like, I have a lot of judgment for this character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like him. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, I... <laughs> he, he's, so he's a leader with very few leadership skills. He just wants to be in charge. He doesn't like to read. He likes to have information told. Which we are not about that here. <laughs> We're all about the reading. <laughs> you know, he's the kind of First Order bad guy that I love to hate because he makes it so easy. You know, it's hard when a character has those redeeming qualities and you're like, oh, they're doing bad things, but they're doing them for the right reason, you know. Everything starts with him having, you know, breakfast or having <laughs> yep. his dinner yep. in his methodical yep. way. Um, yep. I actually found him... A to be a really interesting character because he was so, you did love to hate him. Like you would go back and he would say, he, he would put his foot in his mouth and he would really, you know, but, um, <clears throat> and just the way he observes Professor Glenna Kip and. Oh, and just keeps messing up her name. Like he, he knows her name, but he keeps messing up her title. And that, like, that was also just like, come on, dude. <laughs> like... <laughs> and completely underestimated her as well, which is a, this is a fantastic thing. And he, under, he, underestimated, he underestimated her. He underestimated the, the, the wildlife, you know, the planet. Every, the entire situation, he just he completely misread it. And... I love that Glenna, on the other side of that, refuses to call him by his like official title and calls yeah. him Frank. Yeah. Fran Wayne. I loved that about her because I was like, that is how I would respond in this situation. If someone just kept messing up my title and I had spent so much time with them on the ship, I would just keep doing the thing that just like poked at them a little bit. Very interesting character. I didn't know how I felt about her for most of the book until things started to be revealed. And even when I started to know a bit more about her, I still was a little bit skeptical. Um, mm -hmm. Until right at the end, and I was like, okay, you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, and when you knew that she had the Leia Organa like, seal of approval, I was like, oh, okay, she's fine. <laughs> she's fine. I trust Leia, but like, I trust Leia's instincts. She's been through this so many times. So, you know, if, she, if she's not skeptical of Glenn anymore, I was like, all right, she must be okay. <laughs> Yeah, when, when Glenna first kind of reveals herself to uh, Rose and Ray and Poe, uh, I, I remember Rose thinking of DJ and, and being kind of like suspicious of a stranger, kind of like just messing things up for them again. Well, thank you all so much uh, for, for joining our chat today. This was super fun. So many good <laughs> insights. <laughs>
It's not really a question, but I wanted to say that I adored the part where Poe and BB-8 had matching purple crowns. One of my favorite parts um, is always when you go and you have the celebration moment before like everything goes sideways um, in Star Wars. And I just, just like, what can I do that we haven't seen before? And I was like, well, obviously everyone wants to see Poe and BB-8 in flower crowns. And so, yeah. Obviously. That's the obvious choice. <laughs> This one comes from Jan and Iris. There's a disconnect within First Order officers like Spiffs that don't believe in the Force even when Kylo Ren is the Supreme Leader. Is this a reflection on how spread out and secretive the First Order is organizationally? A self-imposed ignorance via propaganda? I mean, I think so. I think part of being part of an organization is you bring your own prejudices and beliefs with you. So just because, I mean, we even see it in a new hope, right? Like everyone's like, blah, blah, blah. And then like Darth Vader's choke somebody out and they're still like, uh, 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 and they're still talking back to him because they're still like, eh, the force, whatever. So I think you're gonna bring your own like prejudices. And if, you, if you're if you really self-involved and you're like, I know everything, like of course you're not gonna believe in something like the force. This one comes from at Jan and Iris. Is getting eaten the biggest danger first order troopers face? Seems like it is. <laughs> it's not my fault they're tasty. <laughs> If you want to like remove a number of troops um, in a kid's book and you don't want to like keep shooting people, being eaten is a really great way to be like, and then they were eaten because like, do you know what kids love? Kids love when things get, people get eaten. Like it's just a fun They thing, do, right? they but, do. Like, especially like, oh no, they're getting eaten. And it's also kind of funny that like, you're just like walking along and then all of a sudden you're a cheeseburger. <laughs> Next up we have Contra Chris Standor. How did you approach writing the scenes with Ray, Rose, and Poe all together, especially since we'd never seen the trio work together on screen before? Was it difficult at all to figure out how their personalities would bounce off one another? Yeah, it was actually harder than I thought it would be because you don't see them on screen together. So what I ended up doing was letting myself watch The Last Jedi like a whole bunch of times. And then I was like, maybe I should go back and watch Force Awakens too because I haven't watched that one in a while. So then I went and watched that movie. And then I kind of, at that point, had enough of their personality from what we've seen on the screen. I also went back and read um, Elizabeth Wine's YA book, Cobalt Squadron, which introduces Rose and Paige um, kind of before the events of um, The Last Jedi. And so like, I just kind of kept, re like, I read those books. I read the Poe Dameron comic. I read some other things. And I just kind of like, okay, these are the, what I know about their personalities. Like, what would it be like to work together? We both know, you know, Ray is used to working by herself, right? She's she spent a lot of time by herself on Jakku. So then we know like she's gonna be like pretty strong-willed. We know that, you know, Poe is used to being the guy in charge. He, it's kind of like he shows up and he's like, I'm in charge, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, yeah. He's like, do you see this hair? This hair right. is in charge. Like, and we know that because he's like, yo, Leia, I got this. And you're like, ah, you're talking about. So, I mean, she's been through some, some things. Like she knows some stuff. Yeah. And so yeah. we know the personality. And then we know that Rose is like generally at her heart kind. And she's going to be kind of the peacemaker. So like when we got those like, together, I'm like, you have two really strong personalities. And then you have Rose who's kind of like, hey guys, let's, Let's you know work together and make it work. And so like I, it was it was fun. All right, this one comes from my personal reader of the week, Carl Meow. Hi Justina, what is your favorite part of Star Wars? It's a big question with a pretty easy answer. And my answer is always I like that Star Wars is for everybody. I like no matter what kind of stories you want to read, there are stories there. If you want to read like fun stories, or, like you know, all the kids' stories are really fun. If you want to read like dark and brooding things. You know, we have a lot of comics that are like really dark. You know, if you want to read about the dark side, we have those. If you want to read about the, the Rebels of the Resistance, we have those. You know, and that's one of the things I, I do love about the storytelling in Star Wars is it takes everyone into account and it, you know, and it, and it welcomes a lot of different people. And I also think that's why um, the new trilogy, especially, I like it so much because we're seeing lots of different kinds of people coming together. And I feel like that to me has always been the hallmark of Star Wars is lots of different kinds of people coming together. It's like, sure, we might not agree on whether reading is fun or not, but we can all sit back and enjoy a Star Wars movie and like let it take our imagination someplace new. So I do yeah. think that's my favorite thing about Star Wars is that it is for everybody. What can you tell us about your next book coming up for Star Wars, A Test of Courage? Yes, so uh, there's a sample up on StarWars.com, which is probably the best thing I can tell you about it because you can read it. Um, but it comes out in January. It features Renastra Rowe, who is a young Jedi, Avon Staros, who's the daughter of a senator. A few other characters, they crash on a, an abandoned, or like a moon, where it's unsettled. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that they're not as alone as they think they are. Well, I'm super excited for Test of Courage, and I'm also really glad that you were able to join us today. This was so much fun. 
Oh yes, it was great. And thanks to all of you who joined us from home and sent in your questions. Come back next time when the Star Wars Show Book Club explores Dooku Jedi Lost by Kevin Scott. And while you're listening to the audio drama, tweet your questions using the hashtag SWSBCJediLost and we'll ask some on the show. Until then, may the Force be with you.